Ladies and gentlemen, actually just gentlemen because there's no ladies that watch the channel. So gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and if any ladies happen upon the channel, welcome to you too. Um, welcome to the next project. Um, we're kind of flipping between a couple different projects right now, but welcome back to kind of the next big project, um, the Tomahawk Futura. Now this, uh, this particular aircraft, it's the smaller uh, Futura model. So it's I think 1.9 meter uh, wingspan, something like that, maybe two something, I can't remember. But uh, it's, the, it's the smaller size of the two. Uh, this particular aircraft, it's, uh, it's fairly old. I think it's about seven years old, maybe six, five years old, something like that. But um, so the kind, of, the kind of the backstory on this aircraft is it was um, completely disassembled and painted this past winter and now it's ready to be put back together. So this aircraft has flown before. Um, we'll kind of go through all the parts as we go through this, but uh, basically it's ready to be put back together. There was, uh, I think some, the, the landing gear mount or something was ripped out. So there's a little bit of maybe some repairs, some, some minor things we're gonna have to do to it, but it's pretty much just a reassembly of um, all the systems being taken out, okay? So it's, uh, should be a fairly quick project, but uh, I have no idea at this point how many videos it's going to be broken up into. But uh, that's it, guys. So a fun little project. And um, as we go through this, obviously, if you have any questions, make sure you list them down below. Uh, if this is your first time finding the channel or you just haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, turn the notifications on so you don't miss any new videos that I release. And lastly, guys, support the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Let's dive in to this aircraft. All right, guys, so there's a quick shot of uh, the fuselage as it sits right now. So things are a little bit dusty, a little bit taken apart, um, but uh, that's how things are organized. So previous owner of this plane, it was set up with Futaba S-Bus. So that's gonna be the biggest change on this aircraft is um, before I think there was a hub back here, and now we've gotta run individual servo lines all the way to the front. So that's kind of one of the, I think, the bigger jobs on this aircraft. Now we are installing a JR-11 BPX in this aircraft, um, and it's gonna be paired with a 28X radio. So that is, uh, that's what's going in there. And uh, we're gonna be using all of the stock servos, and those are all uh, phenomenal servos. I they're all SB servos, so I haven't checked that yet, so I'll have to check that. I think those will work with standard PWM outputs. Um, <laughs> cross my fingers and hope so, but uh, we'll check that probably first here, actually. So here's a quick shot of kind of all the components that were taken out of the plane. Uh, the landing gear on these Tomahawk aircraft are phenomenal. The cylinders are massive. The mains are fairly normal size. They use all Festo fittings with 4 mil uh, Festo tubing. But the nose gear is huge. Look at the size of that cylinder. Um, very, very big, very sizable. And uh, yeah, great quality gear on this plane. Um, the turbine is a Jets Munts. Jets Munt M140X. I believe this is a little bit older model. Um, I don't think it has a lot of time on it because this airplane was not flown a ton, but uh, we'll probably test that out fairly uh, soon in the build as well too. So looking inside the plane here, we do have the brushless fuel pump, which is good. Uh, the standard Zukoi, um ECU. Uh, we do have a Futaba receiver in there. That's going to be coming out. And uh, air tanks are down below there. And we do have some more air tanks over there. I don't think those belong in this plane. I just had them sitting over with the plane. So that's uh, kind of a, a quick view on everything that's going on in here. But uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to bind this uh, BPX, 11 BPX, to my radio. And... Uh, and do some setup on this because we need to find out if these servos actually work with a standard PWM output. I'll report back. All right, so we've set up a new model in the 28X. We've bound the 11 BPX to the radio and we've plugged in one of these Futaba servos in channel one, PWM output number one. 
and works just fine. So we are good. I think I checked that before. Maybe I didn't, but uh, anyways, that part's done. So uh, we are good to go with these particular servos and putting them back in the plane. All right, guys. So what I mean by uh, this plane was set up with S-Bus is you've got two servo plugs right here, right? So for the wing, you put the wing on, you've got your flap and your aileron. But if you look on the inside of the plane, that connector is only one servo lead, right? So we've got one servo lead that went from this hub right here to the wing, one servo lead that went to the other wing, and then one servo lead that went to the back that fed the two elevators and the rudder. So that's one of the biggest changes we'll have to make is we have to get rid of these little outputs, um, go with standard servo connectors. Um, we're gonna have to figure out all the airlines are on the inside here. They come through those holes. So we've got a little bit of stuff to deal with um, and figure out. That's probably going to be the most complicated thing about this plane switch over is getting rid of the X bus and running all the, or the S bus and running all the servo lines. But I just wanted to explain that stuff to you so you guys understood. All right, guys. So we need to pull the pipe out of this plane or at least get it out of the way just so we have access to the rear end. Now, I just want to cover a couple things that, uh, you know, if I'm given a project like this, uh, I'm not just going to leave everything the way it is. And what I mean by that is like, um, you know, when I go through something like this, I'm not going to leave the, uh, the piece of, uh, you know, flexi tubing here that's not uh, lock wired on. I'm not going to leave the single wrapped safety line when they should be double wrapped. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to not look in the tank because I want to make sure that the clunk system and everything is reliable. You know, I'm going to get rid of I'm going to get rid of that uh, that crappy Festo filter that has the potential of cracking. Um, so I'm I'm I am going to go through this entire plane. Uh, the only time I wouldn't is if the owner said to me, no, leave everything the way it is, don't touch anything else. So, but in this case, everything needs to be gone through, everything needs to be inspected, and um, that's what's happening. So I had to, I loosened up the pipe, had to pull the turbine mounting plates off, then I was able to undo the pipe, slide that forward, the main tank is in the way, so I ended the bolts holding the tank in place. Now the tank's loose. Um, all this to get the pipe out, but uh, it's going to make sure that we've got good access to the back of the plane and that we can uh, go through all these systems that need to be gone through anyways. All right, guys, so here's a little snapshot of what we're dealing with here. So my hands are full, but at the top of your um, screen there, you see the little three output, uh, output hub. That's for the X bus or sorry S bus lead that came from the receiver, and then there's these three extensions. So one for the rudder, and then the two elevator ones are hanging down there, and then the plug-ins are right there. So um, we're going to keep these little extensions because they're nice little plug-ins. The, the rudder one doesn't matter, but the two elevator ones are nice. So we'll keep those, and then we'll run our servo extensions off those guys as long as they work. Uh, that uh, hub is going to come out and there'll be three cables run to the front. Now if you pay close attention to the former that's in there, it's kind of a foam, uh, fiberglass foam covered former, but you can see the glue job on that. So from the other, other end it probably looks good, but from this end it looks like um, like the dog's breakfast was barfed up. So you know, it's things like that, that that's the reason you're inspecting. You know, a prime example is you buy a secondhand plane that uh, you don't know who put it together. Uh, maybe it hasn't flown in a long time. Um, you buy a secondhand plane. Personally, I take it all apart and uh, I inspect it for things like this because unless we took the exhaust um, hub or cone off the back, pulled the pipe, we'd never see that that, uh, that former was missing a whole bunch of glue. So we're gonna high saw that in place. Um, just an important little step. All right, guys, so when the owner uh, gave me the parts for this plane, he gave me a big bundle of uh, servo extensions and wiring and stuff. Um, we did use a bunch of the extensions on another plane, so um, I'm gonna have to make up some more servo extensions. So we've got these guys, um, the red, uh, the white one was already in there for the rudder, and then we've got the single long extension. So we're gonna use this one 
that I just made up on the uh, on the rudder. And then we're going to use some power box wire for making uh, two extensions for the elevators. All right, guys, the rear servo extensions are all complete. We are ready to run them forward. But first, we're going to take this wrap that was uh, attached around the S-Bus cable before, and we're just going to wrap up these, uh, these servo leads and protect them, and then we'll run those all forward. Okay, guys, so I did uh, last night put some uh, high saw on the former that's in there, so that's all reinforced properly. Now we're ready to put the exhaust pipe back in, but before we put the exhaust pipe back in, we need to put a little bit of uh, foam tape on the uh, those two cross pieces for the elevator just to uh, protect the servo lines. So um, <clears throat> previously the original builder had installed this uh, kind of foam uh, tape so we're going to uh, maybe put this back if it sticks plus some extra tape but uh, we're going to do that and then we'll put the exhaust pipe back in. Alright guys you can see the foil tape that I added back on there and uh, that'll protect the servo wires so we're going to put the pipe back in and uh, that's pretty simple. We just slide the pipe back and it has two screws, one on each side of the, uh, the former back there. All right, guys, pipe has been installed. Um, those uh, stick-on cable holders that were originally there, uh, this one and the one that's kind of back here, I glued on with shoe goop. Uh, pipe's been installed. The little cover over the end that gets held on with screws is installed. And the next thing we're doing is going to install the surfaces. So we're going to do the rudder first. Pretty simple. All we're going to do is plug the rudder into the rudder channel, make sure it's nice and centered, and uh, then get that all connected up. All right, guys. And again, because we're here, um, and you guys know this, if you've seen my videos, we will go through and we will make sure everything is Loctited, uh, including the servo screws, which I don't believe were done before because they were... Didn't feel like it. All right, so that surface is ready to go. We're nice and centered. We've added uh, 30 points of sub trim, and uh, that's ready to be installed. All right, guys, so one of you was asking me about um, what tool I use to successfully strip the power box wire. Um, so these are the, the tools that I've got in my RC box. So they're uh, Klein tools. The number on them is 11046, but I'm sure any wire stripper works uh, as long as you get the appropriate size. So this one is uh, has all the smaller size gauges. So 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Um, you can see the different hole sizes there. I am generally using the smallest one for pretty much uh, everything. So when I'm doing my servo extensions, just using the uh, the smallest hole size there, which is 26 gauge. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we have the rudder set up here. Basically, uh, very very simple because the uh, the arm was there's three short arms, so two of the arms were identical. And one of them was just a little bit longer, so that was obviously the rudder one because all the other ones are are much longer. So the servo when we installed it was in its centered position, uh, so we're good there. If we have to make any adjustments afterwards, we can, but uh, the rudder is set up. All right, guys, so that's it for the first episode in the Futura build or assembly series. Uh, if you have any questions about this, don't forget to list them down below. Um, additionally, guys, if you watch the videos, your regular uh, subscriber, your regular viewer, feel free to either contact me via email or make a, a list down below, make a question down below, a comment down below on uh, future videos you'd like to see. And what I mean by that is um, how to install a turbine, how to do this, any future uh, things. I like to add that to my list and uh, in between builds and things like that once I kind of wrap my head around what, what uh, the best way to do something is or the best way to share with you guys 
what that something is, then I'll, uh, I love to put those videos together. So if you have any, any future video ideas, list them down below. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be installing the turbine. We'll put the elevators in this plane and, um, make, continue to make more progress. In the next video, we will be, um, probably running the turbine as well too. We've got to redo the fuel system and things like that, but uh, I want to do that as well uh, before we finish the plane, just to make sure that uh, this turbine's been sitting for a while, so I'm assuming it's going to run fine, but we just want to test it to find out. So that's it guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so already, and we will see you in the next video guys. Thanks for watching.